Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well. Today I thought I would share a video on what happens after your baby's born. I know we talk a lot about obviously pregnancy and all of that experience and then obviously the labour and delivery but we don't often talk about what kind of happens immediately after your baby is born. So I've got Isla here, she's just had a big feed, I think it's about 40 minutes which is a longer feed than she's had you know, in the night. So I'm hoping it conks her up at the moment. Her eyes are wide open. I've got her little Joey bouncer next to me. So hopefully if she does settle, I can pop her in there. Um, but because she's had a big feed and she's been bringing up her milk quite a lot this morning, it's funny, like yesterday she didn't really do it. And then today she's bringing up um, a fair bit of milk, but she did just have a big feed. So I thought I'm gonna pop her up right for as long as I can so she's quite happy there so you never know she might end up falling asleep so yeah so I thought you just I just go into detail because my last video was about my labor and my experience so I have a really positive outlook on my labor there are a few things that obviously happened that weren't in my control nothing really is when it comes to labor um, but overall um, I can look at it look back on it and have quite fond memories which is either the hormones um, still surging <laughs> through me, um, but obviously she's here, she's safe, I'm I'm here, I'm safe. So that's that's the main thing. So what happens after you give birth? So I do have my trusty little book here. So if I look down, that's what I'm looking at. So basically when your baby is born, they obviously, if you need stitches, which I had to, um, nothing too crazy, so I was really lucky. But basically, as soon as the baby's born, obviously they take the baby over and your partner or your person that's obviously helping you with your in your labour, your trusted person, they can cut the umbilical cord and they do a little bit of a quick overview of your baby to make sure all is well. So once that's kind of all done, they'll bring your baby over to you and they will do skin to skin, which obviously is really special and your, your adrenaline is going crazy. And I just remember saying, this is so surreal, like this is my baby. Um, I didn't cry loads. I thought I would get really, really emotional, like be overcome with, with emotion and, and tears and everything. But it was more like a subtle, like tears just falling down a little bit. Um, and I was more just looking at my partner and his reaction. And um, I just remember as they were sorting me out, they took her over to um, have a look at her. Um, before my partner could then cut the umbilical cord and he was just looking over at her and I just was staring at him and his reaction to just seeing her. I get emotional now, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that was the moment. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was just like the highlight for me, obviously. I was happy that she was here safe and everything, but just seeing his reaction, it was almost like I just, I could watch his his reaction being like, oh my gosh, this is my daughter, just, and he didn't have to say anything, I could just see in his eyes and how he was, and I kept saying, go over to her if you want, like, don't worry about me, I'm all good, I can't feel anything, I'd had an epidural, he was like, no, no, it's fine, and then they called him over when it, when it was time for him to cut the umbilical cord, and yeah, it's just really special, and the lady took pictures and everything, anyway, enough about him, <laughs> enough about that, so they brought her over for skin to skin, and they just, like, basically plotted her on, and then they went to see if she would kind of naturally go down to my boobs, boobies, which she did. And uh, she had her first drink and she was a natural. She had a strong latch. It was obviously colostrum, so not loads were coming out or anything like that. I had her on the Thursday and my milk didn't come in till the Sunday, which I will be doing a video all about breastfeeding because it's not as easy or as natural as you think. Um, but I'll leave, I'll side path that, else I could literally talk for ages about breastfeeding. So they wheeled us into another room. So obviously I, in the room that I was in, there was a lot of equipment and they had to clear it out for like the next person to obviously use. So they wheeled us over to a room, which I'd not really thought about the after part. I just thought, I want my baby here. I don't really care what happens next. And they wheeled us over to a kind of like, what looked like another delivery room, to be honest. And it was quite big and I had the, my own bathroom and we were really fortunate as she was born at 6.32 in the morning. We were really fortunate that we had pretty much all day 
in that room until I think it was like I could be completely wrong my partner will watch this and go no it wasn't then but I'm sure it was like late afternoon from memory so we thought we were actually going to just be wheeled on to a ward straight away we had no kind of expectations I know some people are really whisked off to the ward because obviously if there are a lot of people needing to you know obviously deliver their baby you know, and they're pressed for time they will will you onto the ward really quickly but we would just happen we just happen to be timing is everything I think in labor and, and giving birth and we were just really fortunate that they weren't in a rush to whisk us off onto the ward not that you know that's a bad thing but I think you obviously feel more comfortable when it's just yourself and your partner in a room and you can have that like obviously one-on-one -on -one time with your baby so it, obviously we stayed there like I said till late afternoon I was told that I needed to actually go to the bathroom by 10.30. So she was born at 6.32 and I was kind of told about, you know, you need to go to the bathroom and I had like, I think two hours. And obviously having the epidural, I couldn't walk, I couldn't, I didn't trust myself holding Isla for like the whole day anyway, because I was just heavy on my feet when I could eventually walk. But um, yeah, so I thought, oh, how am I going to go to the bathroom when I can't even walk yet? But I got there and I remember trying to go to the bathroom and just, I, it's almost like I forgot how to wee because I couldn't feel like I could walk, but I couldn't feel um, there still. So I couldn't actually go to the bathroom, which was a weird experience. So I was kind of stressing about that because when she put a time on it, I just thought, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Um, but it was fine. I ended up, she ended up giving me more time and I ended up passing urine and you've got to kind of t show them, give them a sample. So they'll give you this weird cardboard bucket, which are very strange in itself, in themselves. Um, and yeah, I had to do two. I think I was meant to do three and I kind of said, I can do another one if you want. She was like, no, it's fine. I trust you. You're all good. Um, so that was fine. So I passed that. They don't, they're not worried about pooping, so don't worry about that. I was like, am I meant to show you one of those? She's like, no, no, all good, just just the wee. And then she started kind of my midwife that was helping me. She started like straight away on the whole breastfeeding journey, which was great, but I was obviously knackered. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she was just showing me how Isla should latch, showing me, you know, the right position. And for days I was doing the same position because I kind of forgot, obviously, that there's different positions. But it all, like, obviously comes to you as the days goes on, day goes on because you're just so knackered. And then we also collected some colostrum, which was great, in, like, little one mil syringes. So I learned how to do that. I was absolutely knackered. I remember just, like, hand expressing with her and just kind of looking over to my partner being like, I just want to rest and I deserve a nap after everything I've done. But looking back, like hindsight's obviously a wonderful thing and it was great that she um, did that with me and that was in my birth plan or birth guide that I wanted to, yeah, be guided as much as possible on breastfeeding because I had my baby at Leicester Royal and I was possibly going to go to the St Mary's Clinic, which is midwifery, midwifery ran, to assist with breastfeeding but I kind of felt when I had that one-on-one -on -one with that midwife and because I was induced I was already in hospital for quite some time I did just want to go home when I was eventually able to so um, yeah I, I couldn't recommend the Leicester Royal enough it was fantastic my experience was great and um, yeah I definitely maybe consider St Mary's Clinic for my next baby potentially but I was I was going to go there for aftercare basically so not actually have my baby there not that there's anything wrong with having a baby there but because it was my first she's my first baby I didn't really know what to expect and it ended up being a positive thing that I was at the Leicester Royal because I needed you know more assistance I needed doctors and I had a Von Tuss and all of that jazz so yeah um, I was in the right place Next thing, so yeah, breastfeeding, they helped me with that, which was great, only that was just the very start of it. Again, I'll have a video about that. Isla had to have certain tests done, so she had hearing tests, she was weighed, the general, like the midwife generally just looked her over um, to make sure she was okay, and she had a few heel pricks um, for collecting blood. I don't know if that's because she has a kidney that doesn't function as well as it should so I don't know if that, that was an additional test or if that was you know just a standard practice but I know we were kind of waiting on those test results to be able to go home because of a kidney 
and um, they also want to make sure that they wee and poo before you go as well. So that's just a general update um, and a guide on what to expect once your baby is born. Because yeah, like I said, I had no thoughts about that. Kind of you just, you, in your pregnancy, you're thinking about pregnancy and trying to do all that right and make sure your baby's growing well. And then you obviously are focusing on the delivery of your baby, making sure that they're here safe. So I thought I would just do a little bit of a general overview of what happened for us anyway, and our experience. Again, everyone's experience is so, so different. I feel like I always have to do a bit of a disclaimer on that. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, again, please comment. If you could share and like this video, that would be great as well. But um, yeah, if you, anyone has any other topics that you want me to talk about, I've got a few lined up here that I'll be trying to video today to get a little bit ahead. But other than that, I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye.